Okay, we're gonna look at factor by grouping in this case. Um, we're gonna start with the very first one, okay? So we have three terms. So it's important when you do factor by terping, uh, grouping or any type of common factoring, you realize how many terms are involved in the polynomial you're working with. Um, poly just means multiple. Um, and monomial is the idea of a term. This has multiple terms to it. The terms are always separated by a plus or a negative sign. So positive or negative, think of it as addition or subtraction. Multiplication um, or a fraction, which is division, might seem like it separates things, but really we know we can combine those into a term. We can't always add our terms together depending on variables. So those are what um, delineate or separate our terms. In this case, we have one, two, three, four different terms. What we're gonna to try to do is we're gonna to try to look for common terms between pairs of these. So we're gonna common or group factor pairs of them, okay? So I'm gonna notice there's an A here and an A here. I could put these two together. There's a B here and a B here. I could put those two together. There's a C and a C and a D and a D. So there's actually multiple ways I could group this question. So that's a really interesting one. Um, I'll try to show you those. It's already set up where I don't have to rearrange any of the um, any of the terms. So I want you to think of it as terms A and B as being a set and terms um, three and four, not A and B. Um, one and two and three and four. And we're gonna try to common factor out of those pairs of groups. So in the very first one, we'll rewrite it again. We have AC minus BC plus AD minus BD. In the very first pairing, I can factor by C, okay? So I know I get is equal to C. When we divide AC divided by C, you, you know, create a one, you end up with A and minus B. Wonderful. What about our second one? Well, in our second one, we have the term D. So I can divide both of these terms by D. Same concept, the D comes out. And in this case, you know, we get A minus b so this is interesting they set it up this way these two brackets are the same and if you remember we did a common factoring question just like this before in other words we can common factor again i can common factor out the a b i can divide both of these terms because this is c times something so think of it as a term and d times something we can common factor both of these out so what does that end up becoming well that ends up with a minus B. And what are we left with on the side? Well, we know that these create a 1, so we have C. And these create a 1 plus D. So through factoring by grouping, we end up with A minus B as in parenthesis times C plus D in parenthesis. I could rearrange these in a different order here. Um, I'll see if I have room on this page. Fortunately, I don't think I can... I can figure out how to scroll down on a page I'm writing on. I have to make new ones. Um, what we'll do is we'll go into question two, and then I'll show you how we could have done question one a little bit differently and still would have arrived at the exact same answer. Um, question two, and actually this will help because we have to do some rearranging in question one to do it a different way. In question two, we do need to do rearranging. And the reason I say that is because if we look at term one and two, okay, and again, we have four terms, 3AB and then D. There's nothing common here. I, I don't have a D in either of these. I don't have an A, B, or 3. Same with these two terms. I need to do some rearranging of what we do have. So since that's the case, if I take a look, I have 3AB. Oh, there's a 3 and an A and a D here. Um, so those might work out really nicely. Or I have a 3AB and I have a B here. I could put those together. So I can actually group things in different ways depending on what I want the outcome to be. And the outcome will still be the same, actually. I shouldn't say depending on the outcome. Um, I don't know what you saw first. I saw the three A's really quickly. So I'm actually going to do those ones. I'm going to put the three AB beside the other plus three AD. So all we did was rearrange. That leaves us with D plus B. And if we take a look at our groupings, Okay, here's a pair group and here's a group. In the second grouping, I don't have a common factor, so that didn't work out so nice. But here, 
I have a really nice, easy common factor to pull out. I have 3a. So I'm going to take 3a out of this question, or out of that group. And those disappear to become b plus, and these disappear, d. And now if we take a look at this, we have plus d plus b, which are the same two. I can rearrange them. I can, what we did in this one, common factor by b plus d again. Um, b plus d is the same as, um, what do we have? d plus b is the same as b plus d. In this case, we talked about in another one, associative property. It doesn't matter the order we add or multiply in. Um, so with that being said, because I can common factor that out, we end up with b plus d. And then when we take those, we end up with 3a. Here, when we divide them, some people see that as canceling out, and canceling out can mislead you to think that it's a zero. But when you divide a value by itself, you end up with a one. So it becomes plus one in this case, okay? So we've now factored this out. Um, like we said before, uh, I'm not gonna write it out just like I said I would here. I'm not going to in this case, but I'm just gonna talk about it. We could have paired this one up with the B and factored just B out, and we could have paired this up with this one and factored just the D out. We would have ended up at the exact same thing. Same concept here. I could have put A and D together and BC and BD together, we still would have ended up with the exact same thing. So it didn't matter how we grouped that. So long as we go through the process correctly, we'll end up at the exact same value in the end.